One of the common applications of derivatives is to find the x-coordinate at which a function has its largest or smallest value. To think about this, let's look at the function 2x to the fifth minus 13x cubed plotted on the interval negative 3 to positive 3. In this interval, it is clear that the largest value of the function occurs on the far right at x equals 3. This is called the global maximum. The global maximum is the x-coordinate at which the function has its largest value on the entire interval. Likewise, the global minimum is the x-coordinate at which the function reaches its smallest value on the entire interval. The plot of this function indicates that the global minimum occurs on the far left at negative 3. Between the global minimum and maximum, there is an x-coordinate near minus 2 at which the function becomes relatively large compared to points around it. It is not the global maximum on the interval shown, but it is clearly a point at which the function is larger than at points around it. This is called a local maximum. A local maximum is a point, call it x equals c, at which the function is largest in the local vicinity. The local vicinity of point c is the region right around and on both sides of c. For a point to be a local maximum, the function must become smaller, moving away from that point in both the positive and negative x directions. This is true for the point marked as a local maximum in the plot. There is also an x-coordinate near positive 2 at which the function becomes relatively small compared to points around it. Again, it is not the global minimum. This point is called a local minimum. A local minimum is a point, call it x equals c, at which the function is smallest in the local vicinity. For a point to be a local minimum, the function must become larger moving away from the local minimum in both the plus x and minus x directions. This is true for the point marked as a local minimum. All of these quantities are collectively called extrema because they are extremes of the function. We will be interested mostly in local extrema because they have physical meaning and because there are well-established criteria for identifying them. These criteria are what we want to talk about next. Let's again look at the function 2x to the fifth minus 13x cubed from minus 3 to 3. We have already identified the point near x equal minus 2 as a local maximum. Let's call this point c. You will notice that the straight line tangent to the curve at this point is horizontal, indicating a first derivative equal to zero. If some point such as x equals c is a local maximum, it will always be true that the first derivative of the function at that point will be zero. In other words, local maxima occur at critical points. But not all critical points are local maxima. Critical points are possible or candidate local maxima that must be checked to be sure they really are local maxima. For a critical point to be a local maximum, the function must be increasing before the critical point, giving a first derivative that is positive. But the derivative must be decreasing to allow the function to reach the local maximum, and this requires a second derivative that is negative. After the critical point, the function must be decreasing, requiring a first derivative that is negative, but the slope must also be decreasing to be sure the function falls away from the critical point, and this requires a second derivative that is negative. If the second derivative is negative on both sides of the critical point, the function is concave down in the region of the critical point. And this turns out to be the second criteria for a local maximum. A local maximum exists at some point c if the first derivative at that point equals zero, indicating that a critical point exists, and if the second derivative at that point is negative, indicating the function is concave down there. This is sometimes called the second derivative test for a local maximum. Similar criteria exist for a local minimum and we can use the same function to illustrate them. We have said that a local minimum exists near x equal positive 2. We can call this point C like we did before. At this point, the straight line tangent to the curve is horizontal, indicating that the first derivative is 0. If point C is a local minimum, the first derivative at C will always be 0. Local minima occur at critical points, but remember that not all critical points are local minima. Critical points are possible or candidate local minima that must be tested to be sure they are local minima. For a critical point to be a local minimum, the function must be decreasing before the critical point, giving a first derivative that is negative. But the derivative must also be increasing to allow the function to reach the local minimum, and this requires a second derivative that is positive. After the critical point, the function must be increasing, requiring a first derivative that is positive, but the slope must also be increasing, which is indicated by a second derivative that is positive. If the second derivative is positive on both sides of the critical point, the function is concave up in the region of the critical point. A local minimum exists at some point c if the first derivative at that point equals zero, indicating that a critical point exists, and if the second derivative at that point is positive, indicating the function is concave up at that point. Again, this is called the second derivative test for a local minimum. Using these criteria, it is easy to find the local extrema of our example function and to identify them as local minima or maxima. 
We start by finding the function's first derivative, which is 10x to the fourth minus 39x squared. We set this equal to zero and solve for the x values that give critical points. This is the first requirement of local extrema. They must be critical points. Factoring out x squared leaves 10x squared minus 39 in parentheses. The x squared outside the parentheses indicates that setting x equal to zero would produce a critical point. Thus, x equal to zero is one solution. In addition, if the argument in parentheses equals zero, the first derivative is zero. To solve this for x, subtract 10x squared from each side and multiply by negative one. Then divide each side by 10 to obtain x squared equal to 3.9. Taking the square root gives two additional critical points, x equal positive and negative 1.975. There are three critical points, one at x equal to zero, one at positive 1.975, and one at negative 1.975. To determine if these critical points really are extrema, and to identify them as local minima or maxima, we need to apply the second derivative test. The second derivative of the function is 40x cubed minus 78x. Evaluating the second derivative at 1.975 gives 154.1. Because it is positive, the function is concave up at this critical point, which means x equals 1.975 is a local minimum. Evaluating the second derivative at negative 1.975 gives negative 154.1. Because this is negative, the function is concave down at this critical point, making x equal to negative 1.975 a local maximum. Evaluating the second derivative at zero gives zero, which does not match the criteria for a local maximum or minimum. Therefore, no conclusion can be drawn about this critical point. Our example function has a critical point at x equal to zero, but the second derivative test is inconclusive because the second derivative at zero is neither positive nor negative. To determine if the point x equals zero is a local minimum, maximum, or neither, we need to investigate the concavity on both sides of and close to the critical point. The second derivative at minus 0.1 is positive 7.76, which means the function is concave up to the left of the critical point. The second derivative at x equals positive 0.1 is negative 7.76, indicating the function is concave down to the right of the critical point. From this, we can conclude that the concavity changes at x equal to zero, and if the concavity changes at a critical point, it is not a local minimum or maximum. It is instead called a saddle point. This is a critical point at which the concavity changes. Yes, it is also an inflection point, but not all inflection points are saddle points. Saddle points are inflection points that are also critical points. We can summarize our work with this function on its plot. There is a local maximum at negative 1.975 because the first derivative at that point is zero and because the function is concave down in that region. There is a local minimum at 1.975 because the first derivative there is zero and because the function is concave up on both sides of this critical point. A saddle point exists at x equal to zero because the first derivative is zero at that point and because the second derivative changes from positive on the left of zero to negative on the right of zero. And that's maxima and minima.